All right, so I'd like to start my sketch with deciding <laughs> where my main object is going to be. Well, because most of the time, if I don't, <laughs> I will end up painting uh, my hero somewhere close to the edge of the paper sheet. And uh, to avoid that, I need to set up clear uh, frames or boundaries of my subject. So with the pencil lightly, I'm just marking the car and the Christmas tree and all the proportions to make sure that <laughs> the, the car and the tree are kind of uh, in the middle, not uh, jumping around my paper. And everything should be more or less um, proportional because uh, this painting is going to be rather realistic and I want to keep this car look uh, normal. <laughs> And yet it took me rather a while to figure out all the car elements and proportions. Uh, it's clear that I don't really uh, have anything to do with cars <laughs> in life. And uh, yeah, so it took me a while to get all the parts of the car um, like nice and straight. So everything looks normal and proportional. And now I'm just gonna finish the tree and be ready to move on. So I have this little routine where I test uh, colors and color mixes that I would like to use for uh, the painting to find more or less um, acceptable <laughs> mix um, before I actually paint because sometimes uh, since watercolor is based on water and everything is humid and flowing and there's no time to think. And um, I don't want to lose time trying to mix a color that I would uh, uh, like more. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just better to have them ready to just literally write down the recipe, <laughs> the um, components of the perfect mix. So I know which uh, uh, base colors, which primary colors I used uh, to get my best tone, the tone of my choice. And this is uh, quite a quick process, re really. <laughs> I don't really spend much time doing this, but it's really helping me to, you know, get prepared and just focus on painting rather than looking for color solutions uh, during the painting process.
And now we start. I need actually to tape the paper uh, to the table. I'm working on a on the plastic uh, board, uh, and uh, uh, I need I need to make sure that my paper is gonna stay straight because I'm gonna use lots of water-based techniques, lots of wet techniques. So uh, usually those uh, <laughs> techniques uh, make paper go uh, in like in waves uh, it's gonna get deformed so i need to strap it down to the the board or to the table directly and then uh, i actually want to hide some of the highlights uh, i mean <laughs> i want to have the highlights in the end of my painting which means that i need to preserve them so I used uh, masking fluid to cover some of the parts that I want to stay perfectly white after I finish my painting. And, and then I realized that my sketch is way too dark. <laughs> so uh, carefully I um, removed uh, some of the darker lines. Um, even though I'm, I'm fairly confident they're not going to be that visible under my watercolor layer, uh, later because uh, the colors are going to be intense, going to be lots of red and green and all of that stuff. So I'm pretty sure that my my sketch will disappear under all the watercolor layers that are coming. But well, this is just a habit, so I prefer to make sure that I'm safe, all the uh, pencil lines are light, and then just <laughs> with the <laughs> with the calm heart just go on and prepare the rest of my uh, sketch with the uh, masking fluid I was thinking that actually Preserving some white um, on the Christmas tree would be a nice solution too to make those Christmas bowls shine, like really shine. <laughs> so that's why I dropped a few um, bubbles of masking liquid on the places where I would like to preserve my uh, Christmas bowls. And as I said, my main technique here is going to be wet on wet. So I need to generously cover the paper with water. Um, so I, I use rather um, mid-size uh, flat brush. It's easier to work with, especially when you need to cover a um, big amount of uh, water, <laughs> to put big amount of water on paper. So yeah, the flat brush is a uh, really nice tool for that and after uh, applying water first on paper i need to actually let this paper dry not dry but like soak <laughs> soak the water into its layers because if i start painting directly on it right away um, the water is gonna pile up on top of the paper and the paint will, will just be there as a um, as a, I don't know, as a pond. <laughs> it's not really going to be nice. So I need to wait a little bit for the paper to absorb water a bit deeper in its uh, layers. And then the watercolor layer is going to go really nice uh, there <laughs> and not uh, pull into different directions too much. It will pull though, like you can see now, but um, <laughs> they, that's uh, way better than it could have been if I started painting right away on a super shiny wet surface uh, full of water.
And my first choice would be to work on the city line, on all the buildings that are at the back. Uh, wet technique uh, is the best for it because there will be no sharp edges, no hard lines, everything smooth, smooth and soft and um, exactly what I need at the back, uh, at, the, at the background of my painting. I don't really want um, to go into detail. Uh, first, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, painting architecture, <laughs> full disclosure. Uh, but also, I would like to have this kind of, um, you know, main focus on the car and the tree. And everything that, that is at the back, uh, I want to keep it kind of out of the focus, further away, covered with snow. And, um, you know, it's not an important part of the painting. So that's why uh, using wet techniques uh, to work on that area will be the best solution. Yeah, that's why for now <laughs> my layers don't look like anything. Literally just uh, <laughs> strokes and sticks of some random colors. Well, not really random. I keep uh, I keep them um, rather calm. So that would be a mix of uh, blue and brown uh, with different um, proportions. So sometimes brown is uh, showing off more and sometimes blue is uh, primary and uh, I still keep the palette pretty limited, so in the end of the day, it's a very calm grayish mix uh, of, of color on the background. To add some of the nice, warm, festive feeling, it's Christmas after all, I'm gonna drop a few yellows just to mark the areas where there's um, Christmas decoration or uh, maybe light in the window, some really nice warm light um, at the back. Again, I'm not really like going into detail painting like specifically a window and the light bulb. <laughs> it's more of a um, suggestion that there is some light at the back and in the end of this uh, painting session you will see <laughs> that um, Overall together, it's kind of making sense when you will see the whole picture. The, the eye will make sense of uh, this yellow color there and it will feel like, oh yeah, that's uh, actually some windows at the back. Even though it doesn't really feel or look like this right now. But hey, it's all preparations. It's just uh, it's an underpainting session <laughs> right now. Working on the background like this feels more like a meditation. Um, so I don't really have any goal to make um, a very clear uh, architecture uh, painting there in the background. Again, it's just a hint that there are some buildings and uh, windows and doors. Um, also, I have in plan <laughs> later on when this first layer will get dry to add some details and more defining parts um, to make it more recognizable as uh, as buildings as architecture at the back uh, but you really need to have patience to work layer by layer and wait for 
the paper to get dry completely. And uh, <laughs> as you remember, I really put a lot of water <laughs> on the paper from the start. So yeah, need to be need to be patient. Also, really, when you don't feel like you have enough patience, you can, of course, speed up the process with a um, hair dryer and just dry the sheet completely to keep working on the other layers. But also, it's a good opportunity to, uh, you know, correct the shapes because the paper still carries some water in its layers, it keeps the water for a really long time if you work on cotton paper like I do. So you can really kind of, uh, you know, um, decide uh, the shape of objects in your painting. And while your layers are wet, it's really easy to, to manage the shapes and correct them with the brush and kind of direct the, pe the, the pigment, the paint, uh, where it goes, how it goes, and how diluted it is, how sharp the edges are. Um, that's what I like actually <laughs> doing when the paper is uh, slowly getting dry, so it's not soaking wet, but also not, not dry yet. That's the best time for um, fixing the shapes. Or you can move on and paint another part of the painting, like for example, the snow. <laughs> Um, as well, the paper is still a bit wet, so I can still apply some of the very soft strokes at the bottom and they will not have sharp edges and paint and snow is kind of important to, <laughs> to keep away from hard, sharp lines um, to show the, you know, the, the fluffiness of the snow. Also keep layers very light the wash is very light um, as uh, you know if you if I leave a uh, snow just a blank piece of paper that would be of course very white but <laughs> not really look realistic it's just gonna look too flat so to portray white snow uh, but in a more realistic manner I need to show the shadows on that snow to show that it's three-dimensional that it's uh, physical, <laughs> it's real, <laughs> it's not just a cut out um, rectangular of white <laughs> on, the, on the painting. So that's why I had to dilute my uh, mix, my gray mix, where there is a bit more of blue actually, um, to, to show the shadows on the snow. Look, by the time I finished or started <laughs> with the snow, uh, my, my background uh, with the architecture landscape uh, situation got dry, so I can go on and add some of the details and define the, um, um, you know, the walls and windows and doors on my buildings to make them more uh, realistic and more recognizable. But still, I'm working in a very loose manner, so again, I'm not really focused on showing every single part of the building, but more uh, focusing on tones. So I would show the darkest tone in the contrast to the lightest part uh, of this building, so that will visually kind of hint you on what it is and why it looks like this.
And I felt like since we're working on a winter um, story here, um, I was always planning to add some snow snowflakes <laughs> with the wine gouache. Uh, but um, right now I feel like it's a good opportunity to integrate some of the snowflakes into a not yet finished background. So it will organically kind of uh, uh, stay in there and will not look um, way too artificial or cut out. So now as I'm half done with uh, the buildings, I think it's a good moment to establish some of the highlights, some of the brightest elements at the back by adding some uh, white gouache. Gouache is also a very good um, opportunity for me to um, show the uh, corners and edges of the building to make them pop out. Uh, maybe there's snow in there or just reflection on the windows and yet uh, it will give me a very nice texture of a cityscape at the back just by adding light, uh, almost diluted actually, strokes of gouache. And now the uh, exciting part, at least exciting for me. Um, I don't remember when I was actually painting a car last time, if, if ever. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a very interesting subject for me to work on right now. And uh, it's uh, the color of it is very attractive. It's a very nice, juicy, red, bright color. And I would like to somehow show this shiny texture of, of the car, keep all the highlights and reflections on it, and also uh, don't forget to show the snow, all the snowflakes and snow that uh, has been lying there on that car for a few days, apparently. <laughs> Nobody moved it for a while. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting, an interesting subject to work on. And well, I'm not in the rush, so I work slowly with the wet and dry techniques, uh, applying very light underpainting. I always have a chance to intensify the color when I need to, but right now I prefer to keep things light and transparent, um, <laughs> add some of the light uh, yellow tones to show the, the lights at the back and the front, but let them kind of bleed into the main layer of the car. So it all looks very nice organic without, you know, like a 
noticeable outline of each element. I don't want to have like lights in a perfect <laughs> circle <laughs> um, or, you know, I don't want any sharp lines actually. So yeah, I like when all my, all my colors bleed into each other and look very smooth and soft. And I think it's um, that's the time to to leave the car <laughs> and uh, move um, to painting the tree. I've got some uh, darker uh, green mix and. I've got some darker green mix and went on uh, just um, chaotically um, laying down the first layer of the tree and as I go I inject some of the darker shadows uh, on the tree to show that it's uh, you know three-dimensional <laughs> it has a volume and of course I'm not gonna draw every single needle in that tree but uh, again the contrast between light and shadow um, on the tree will give this feeling of nice real christmas tree uh, instead of just a um, green flat illustration And I thought that dropping some yellow lights, <laughs> the Christmas balls, right now while the whole layer is wet would be a nice idea as they will blend and bleed and of course not keep a defined form, defined shape. Um, well, because everything is too wet. But it's kind of nice in a way that I still have, I still have the space preserved with the masking fluid. So when I will remove it, there will be perfectly uh, round <laughs> area for me to work on to fill it out with a color and i'll have more defined christmas balls but for now uh, because these guys are uh, blended they look like um, you know some of the christmas balls that are further away hiding in the in the tree just shining through the needles um, but not really that visible. So it's going to be a nice combination of like uh, blurry lights that remind of the Christmas balls and very defined Christmas balls. And I'm jumping back to the car, not losing any time, <laughs> um, working on the new layers, intensifying the color. Um, layering technique is one of my favorite, to be fair, to have like more control over what I do with watercolor and it's also a good opportunity to just just leave the tree to dry and uh, me work on something else of course I could use a hair dryer to dry the whole thing but I mean if I can continue working on the painting without interruptions that's nice too
One of the very pleasing parts of uh, painting on cotton paper is the ability to lift the pigment and uh, the, I really like this part. So yeah, I create some of the highlights on the tree by lifting the pigment with the flat brush. Uh, the paper shines through it again and it looks way more organic if I would uh, mask it with a liquid and instead. So yeah, I use this technique pretty often. Well, since the tree is uh, kind of inside the car, <laughs> I need to show it uh, through the windows. So now I would like to cover the whole window part with the colors of the Christmas tree. Um, yeah, why not?
So now the picture starts to look like something uh, <laughs> nicely put together. I need to, well, finish the car. So there's some tires that are missing. So how about I <laughs> go ahead and uh, paint the tires. I don't want to use uh, pure black color. I actually try to avoid um, plain black color from the tube. I always uh, mix my dark tones with primaries or secondaries. Uh, and sometimes I can, of course, add like black to just darker, in, to darker the tone in general. But yeah, pure black is not, I'm not a fan of it. So that's why my tires are rather bluish <laughs> and grayish instead of just being like a flat out black. And again, I mean, this is just the first layer. I'll have all the time in the world to add the, the shadows and um, details and uh, some volume to those tires. So maybe in the end of the day, they, they will just look as dark as black. The shadow under the car needs to be more clear as well to add some realism to our subject. <laughs> um, so yeah, carefully adding the shadow right under the car. And uh, I like to leave this white kind of space in between the shadow and the car. 
Uh, technically, it's snow in there, but it also gives uh, me as a viewer the opportunity to kind of see the separation between the car and the floor, the ground, the snow. <laughs> And how about yet another layer of red on the car? I really feel like I want this car to be like a, <laughs> I don't know, like a lollipop, <laughs> bright red. So I'm gonna add another layer and thankfully cotton paper can handle multiple layers, no problem. So yeah, I'm gonna make it really bright red. So on the final stages of this painting, I really just need to add some accents to work through the, the car's details. So I would add some brighter red strokes here and there, um, define the highlights with my uh, gouache again, and this part needs to be smoothed out as well with the brush. Removing the mask and liquid is also quite a therapeutic part <laughs> of the painting, so yeah, I like doing that. And it's a good opportunity to see um, the picture in more like finished way, so you, I can define what's missing and how those highlights actually uh, look together in the big picture. And if I actually need them, if not, I might cover cover those areas or soften the edges with a brush. So on the final stages of this painting, I really just need to add some accents to work through the, the car's details. So I would add some brighter red strokes here and there, um, define the highlights with my uh, gouache again and this part needs to be smoothed out as well with the brush And the tree, I'll add way more sharper details to show that it's, uh, you know, <laughs> a pine tree. <laughs> uh, it has some, some needles and some sharp, 
sharp well, angles. Um, so yeah, without drawing every single needle again, I can just hint on the fact that this is a Christmas tree, a pine tree. It's pretty pointy. <laughs> so that can be done with a um, dry and dry technique and with a darker tone. So in this way, I keep the painting still uh, impressionistic. I didn't really go into many details and yet um, recognizable and um, for, for the people, you know, and yet people can recognize what it is and understand um, the whole idea of the painting. In the tree, I'll add way more sharper details to show that it's, uh, you know, <laughs> a pine tree. <laughs> uh, has some some needles and some sharp, sharp angles. Um, so yeah, without drawing every single needle again, I can just hint on the fact that this is a Christmas tree, a pine tree. It's pretty pointy. <laughs> so. That can be done with a um, dry and dry technique and with a darker tone. So in this way, I keep the painting still uh, impressionistic. I didn't really go into many details and yet people can recognize what it is and understand um, the whole idea of the painting.
But still, one of my favorite parts is to actually sprinkle <laughs> some gouache as if um, uh, it's a snowfall to show the snowflakes. And I really like uh, splashing <laughs> and sprinkling the paint. Uh, even though everything around me and me gets covered with paint, but yeah, I mean, that's Christmas, right? <laughs> Well, all right, um, this is really the final stage and my perfectionist self is trying to add all the missing details and accents that I feel like will improve the painting. It's also quite problematic because, you know, it's important to know when to stop and not just overdo your painting. Mm, I don't want to end up with a super heavy detailing <laughs> uh, of my work. and. Yeah, it's uh, it can be it can be difficult for for people to just you know stop at the right mo moment. So yeah, I think a couple of details here and there, and this is my clue to to finish and give the painting to you, <laughs> my dear viewers. I hope you enjoyed watching it, watching my painting process. And let me know if you have questions or suggestions or just would like to share your thoughts about this painting or watercolor in general. Thank you for watching.